Okay, we are almost finished. Now, welcome back. Last video, we looked at how to do the program for our top tile, and this is it. This is it all together for the left, right, and middle pegs. And the logic is always the same. We check the touch in the peg. Then we check to see if the middle one is there. If the middle one is there, we go on top of it. If it's not, we check where the bottom one is. If the bottom one is there. Ah, uh, sorry, if the bottom one isn't there, we go to the bottom. If the bottom one is there, then we check if the middle one is there. The bottom, if the middle bottom one is there and the middle one is not, we go on top of the bottom one. If the bottom one is there and the middle one is there, we go on top of both. Okay, so that's the logic behind it all. The numbers then you just fill in as they go. Now, the point of the Tower of Highland game is to move the tower from one pole to the other. Okay, usually from left to right or right to left. Using the middle one for the moving post. And the easiest version of it is what we've got here with three tiles. Okay, but there are more. You okay, have four tiles, five tiles, six tiles, and so on, and so on, and so on. The more tiles you have, obviously, the more complicated it becomes. And so, there's a move factor. The idea being that this game, depending on how many tiles there are, can be completed in a minimum number of moves. And what we're going to do now is make a way that we can keep track of those moves and to see if we've actually done it or not. In the activity pack on the website, there's an extra page which goes through how to make your own Tower of Hanoi, as well as how to figure out the fewest possible moves or a tower of a certain number. But for this, all we can do is make a counter to keep track of how many moves it takes. And in all honesty, it doesn't matter which sprite you do this part of the program in. But personally, I'm going to put it in the backdrop. Because there's no moving parts, and it's just out of the way there. Okay? The first step is to create a variable. Down here, first one from the bottom, we have variables. Click that, and click make a variable. And I'm going to call mine uh, steps. But you can call yours whatever you want. Count, number, steps, it doesn't matter. Okay? The name is just so we know what, what uh, is what you can. Variables themselves are like empty boxes. You can put things in, you can take things out, you can change what's in them, you can change what they're used for. It doesn't really matter. They're just a way that we can store and manipulate data. Okay? The name doesn't matter, but it does help us in knowing what it is we're actually playing with. Then we always steps. And you notice you have this set my variable and change my variable buttons, which we can change to say now steps. So the first thing we want to do is when we start our game, we want our steps to equal zero. Okay, so I'm going to, when green flag clicked, I'm always going to set my variable. Zero. That way, it doesn't matter how many steps you took here in the previous go, and you try again, or somebody else tries, it'll always reset to zero. And we want to add one to our counter every time we move a tile. And to move a tile, we have to click on it. So we can actually use this mouse down button to use this to keep track. And what we can say is that as long as make sure it happens forever, is that if our mouse is down, then we can change, we'll put the variables again, we can change steps by one. Seems sound enough. So we set the steps to zero, and then every time our mouse goes down, we change it by one. Makes sense. Let's press green flag, remove, and you notice two things have happened. Number one, our steps are changing every time we click, but it's changing constantly. Okay, and it does stop when we're not clicking. So 
we're on the right track, but we're not quite there. The reason we're not quite there is because of this forever loop. Okay, we'll take that out just for a second. This is a loop, and essentially it means whatever is inside execute for as long as the program is running forever. And if I put this back in now, it will always be checking to see if the mouse is down. If the mouse is down, we're going to change the counter by one, change our steps by one. Once we've changed the step by one, we go back to start and we check to see if the mouse is down and we change. When we're moving these, we have to have our mouse held down. Otherwise, it will check the peg and then it will go to the position it's been told to go to. So this these only move, they only get assigned to a different peg when we release our mouse pointer. But for as long as our mouse pointer is down, our counter is going to be changing by one. What we need is a way to not start that loop again until we've released. So ideally we want one click, change one, we wait until we release, and then the whole process starts again. So what we're going to do we're going to tell this part of our program to actually wait. And we can do that by going into control and using the wait until button. And we're going to put that inside our if. Okay. So we're going to change step by one and then we're going to wait for a certain condition. Once that condition has been met, we're going to come out of our if, back to forever, to the top, and then we're going to wait for this condition to come true again. Then we're going to change by one, then we're going to wait for the condition, this condition to become true again, and then it happens over and over and over again. Now what condition is that we're trying to wait for? Well, we're waiting for us to release one of these. Okay, our mouse is not down. And we've already done that, we've already played about with that, we've used the not operator and our mouse down from sensing. Now what this will do is forever loop, check in, see if the mouse is down. If the mouse is down, we change our steps by one. And then we wait until the mouse is up. Once the mouse is up, we go back to the top. Then we wait for the mouse to go down. Once the mouse goes down, we change the steps and we wait for the mouse to come up. Press start, we check this again. Now I click, I change by one. My mouse is still down because I'm still moving this, but the counter has not changed other than that original click. Go to the thing, I release. That happens, you can see I've changed these now back to glide. And we're still at one. I click on the next one to move it. My counter goes up. I can move this over here, release it. That will go where I want to do and the counter has only changed by one. Okay? And I can do this, in fact, every time I click, doesn't matter if I'm touching them. It only changes once when I click. Okay, and then I go back to the start and it resets to zero. And essentially, that is the game. We have a tower of three that you can move between the pegs and you need to move it from the left peg to the right peg. Um, what you can do if you're interested, you can make it a little bit more difficult for yourself by adding in a fourth tile or a fifth or sixth you can keep going as long as you want now the logic will always be the same but every time you add one tile you have an extra layer of checks to make okay but that is us that is it from us at technocamp so thank you very much for following along thank you very much for watching uh, hopefully you've managed to make the vid uh, make the game and it works and you enjoyed yourself so come back and see us at our other activity packs uh, another date so thank you very much and goodbye